So right now we're in the quad area of Long Beach City College. This is the LAC campus, which is the liberal arts campus. Now down off of PCH over in Long Beach, downtown Long Beach, you have the PCC campus, which is the Pacific Coast campus. There you have more of the trade schools, the night schools, you know, things like that. Here's more of the liberal arts. This campus is an awesome campus. They've been working really, really hard. You got construction going on over there right now, uh, putting in a brand new building, but they have been over the years just developing this campus like crazy. I absolutely love this place. I still take classes here. I am a uh, product of this place. But yeah, I still take classes here as much as I can. I love this campus. Congratulations, your offer was accepted. This is exciting times for you and your family. You're packing, you're getting ready to move into your brand new home. But then, the seller backs out of the deal. Can he do this? My name is Steve Arthur and I am a local realtor here in the Long Beach area and all of the surrounding cities powered by nationwide real estate executives. Now, if this is your first time seeing me here on YouTube, maybe you might want to uh, hit that subscribe button and ring that bell so you will be notified every time I make a video because I do put out these videos every single week all about Long Beach, all about the things that you want to know about, where you want to live, where you want to eat, and of course, where you want to play and even can a seller back out of the deal once he accepted your offer? So if you or anybody that you may know is thinking about relocating to the Long Beach area or taking the equity in your home and going to another state to live your dream lifestyle, all you gotta do is give me a call, shoot me a text, send an email, or just register on my website and I will personally call you. All my information is down below. So, can that seller back out of the deal once he's accepted your offer? And if so, what may cause this? Now, what usually happens is the seller simply just gets cold feet. Now, this is for the sellers. If you are actively selling your home right now and you're starting to get cold feet, which is not uncommon, okay? We usually see it more so on the buyer's side when they're worried about the neighborhood, the house, is it the right one, and the school district, and all that kind of stuff. But when you're selling your home, you usually have your motivations and your reasons. So what I tell my, my clients when they're starting to get cold feet is simply slow down, take a break, put on some Steely Dan, make a cocktail, smoke a joint if that's what you're into, and just re-examine why you wanted to sell your home in the first place. Was it to upgrade to, to that bigger home in your dream home? Or was it the kids are gone now and you just wanted to downsize your house? Just re-examine it and you'll find that you are ready to move forward again. After all, change is good. And hell, I know it's a big life change moving and some people do not adapt well to changes like this. It creates anxiety for them. It creates a lot of stress. I hate your Wi-Fi. I hate and I get that. So just remember your end goal because you will not grow staying in the same place. So change is epic. Now for the sellers out there, there is no big option for you to back out of the deal once the offer has been accepted, unless you have it listed into your listing agreement and more importantly, how it's put with the buyer's agreement with the buyers themselves. So unless you put something on the buyer's contract saying contingent on, a, contingent on us finding another home, there's really not going to be a back out clause there for you. Unlike the buyer who has 10 days to do his due diligence on the property to order the appraisal, to order the inspections, to get the reports, review them, and make a decision. 
because if they don't like something on the home inspection report and you're not willing to do it, they can walk away from the deal. Now, this is not uncommon, but most buyers that do write an offer are serious buyers. And that is why we have them put down the earnest money deposit, the EMD, as a good faith deposit to show that they are serious buyers and they do want to purchase your home and move forward. After all, change is good. So if you were to take that away from them at this point, they would feel like they've been railroaded, jilted, screwed, however you want to put it. They're not going to be happy. So a great point to remember is a buyer who feels like they've been railroaded, jilted, or screwed, or whatever you want to call it, can turn into a pissed off buyer really quick. And now they're going to be wanting a lot of things from the seller to make things right. Now, it's very rare for a court of law to make you sell your house and move out and do all that. It can happen sometimes. I've personally never heard of it, never seen of it, but it does fall under the clause called a suit for a specific performance. But what it really comes down to is what was written between the buyer and the seller in the buyer's agreement. But if you do back out of the deal, it is also very important to, for you to know that you will be financially obligated, not only to your listing agent, but obviously to the buyers. The buyers are gonna want their home inspection money back, their appraisal inspection back. Uh, if they had to use a st short-term storage or anything like that, you could be on the bill for that. And God forbid if they had to move out here and get a short-term rental and they were banking on your home, then you could be on the hook for their short-term rental until, until they find another property. And because that was their plan to buy your home, that was their intention, and that was what they were doing moved here to buy your home. So a lot of the times, it's just best to keep moving forward. Unless there's a really, really, really great reason as to why you have to back out. Like I said earlier, buyer's remorse is a lot more common than seller's remorse. So why would this happen? Well, there are basically four major reasons why this could happen. Well, the first one is pretty basic. That so so the, the seller just feels like he could have gotten a better price. They didn't want to sell their home at the appraised value. They felt it's worth more than everybody else's house in the neighborhood. You get that a lot. So basically the appraiser came out, did his job, wrote up the report, and then when they reviewed the report, and it came in lower than the agreed upon sales price. So now the homeowner feels like he's been jilted, screwed, railroad, however you want to call it, and he wants to back out of the deal. Now we all understand that some appraisals do come in low every time to time. And other times, they're just not that far off at all. So things still get done to make the deal happen. But the key point here is the seller has to remember is the buyer cannot get a loan for more than the appraised value on the home. And a lot of people do not have that extra money to just kick in out of pocket. Now, of course, there are some very, very practical reasons as to why you would have to back out of the sale of your home after accepting an offer. And this first one, I can't think of anybody that would fight you on it or do anything. Or actually, both of these. I just can't think of anything, anybody that would fight you. One is, God forbid, you go to the doctors and you get the that news. You've got cancer. Well, you're not gonna wanna focus your energy on selling your house. I get that. Put that aside. Your health is always the most important thing, period. So yeah. That's an acceptable reason. And number two, say you were gonna sell your home because of a job transfer, so you're getting ready to move out of state. Well, the job transfer fell through and there's no reason for you to sell your home. That's a very, very acceptable, practical reason. But if there were any expenses paid for by the buyer, such as the, the inspections, the appraisal, or maybe storage or whatever, they're going to want to get reimbursed for that, and that is understandable. And the last reason is the most common. And that's just the emotional attachment to the property, and especially if you grew up in that home or even thought this was going to be your forever home. There's a lot of different reasons and a lot of happy memories, and sometimes it's just very, very hard for people to let go. And that just goes back to simply getting cold feet. So again, chill out, relax, Put on some Steely Dan, make that cocktail, roll a joint if that's what you're into, and re-examine your goals, your reasons, your motivations, and you will be ready to move on again. Your home provided you with a great life, great memories, both good and bad. It provided you with equity so you can 
buy that dream home that you are thinking about. So now it's time for you and your family to move on and for your home to do the same for another family that is in the position that you were once in. So if you have your mind just dead set on backing out of the deal still, just keep in mind, be prepared to pay. After re-examining your goals and motivations, just be assured that your home will provide for another family as it did for you. So you can move on your next chapter of your life to put your stamp of approval on your new home, make it yours, and get on with your dream lifestyle. So the answer to the question, can a seller back out of the deal once the offer has been accepted? Well, the answer is yes, no, probably shouldn't, could, maybe so. It all depends on what was the reason and what was written into the purchase agreement. And that is something that you would want to talk with your trusted real estate advisor about to see what the terms are into the contract and what you are agreeing to. So I hope you found this video helpful. And until next time, take care.